In this lesson, we're going to be looking at how we can carry out hypothesis tests for the mean of a population of unknown variants and where we have a small sample size. Now, when testing for the mean of a normal population X with unknown variants sigma squared, when the sample size n is small, the test statistic is t, where t is equal to x bar minus mu over s over root n, and t follows a t distribution of n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So let's see how we can apply this in answering a question. So we're going to be working on this question here. It says, a green grocer claims that his cabbages have a mean mass of more than 1.2 kilograms. In order to check his claim, he weighs 10 cabbages chosen at random from his stock. The masses in kilograms are as follows. So we have all this data here. So stating any assumptions that you make, test at the 10% significance level whether the green grocer's claim is supported by his evidence. All right, so let's carry out the test. Here I'll start by saying, let X represent the masses of the cabbages where X follows a normal distribution of mean mu and variance sigma squared. And this is assuming that the population is normal. Now here, the now hypothesis will be that the mean mass is equal to 1.2 kilograms. So that's mu is equal to 1.2. And for the alternative hypothesis, since the claim is that the mean mass is more than 1.2 kilograms, so it's mu is greater than 1.2. So therefore, we are saying that if the now hypothesis is true, then we know that mu will be equal to 1.2. And also since n is small and the population variance is unknown, then the test statistic in this case will be t, and that is where t is equal to x bar minus mu, and that's over s over root n. So in order for us to calculate the test statistic t, we shall need to know the sample mean x bar, and we shall also need to find the unbiased estimate s squared from which we will get the S here. So let's do that. So first of all, for the sample data given, I'm going to enter it into my calculator. So I'll go to start mode, which is 3, and option 1, and I'm going to enter all the data. So we have 1.26, enter, and 1.24, enter, 1.17, enter, 1.23, Enter 1.18, enter 1.25, enter 1.19, enter 1.20, enter 1.21, enter and 1.18. So this is what we have right here. So we actually have 10 entries in total. All right, so now that we have the data, we are now going to put it down. So we are going to need the sum of squares. And for the sum of squares, we will find it as shift, then 1, then sum 3. So sum of squares is option 1, and we get 14.6745. So that's 14.6745. And we shall also need the sum of the numbers. And we get that as, that's option 2 here, and it's 12.11. So that's 12.11. So remember, we want the sample mean, x bar. 
which is found by sum of x over n and in this case the sum is 12.11 and is divided by n and in this case n is 10 so we are going to get that as 1.211 and then for the unbiased estimate s squared we find it by 1 over n minus 1 of the sum of squares minus the sum of roots squared over n like this so this in our case since n is 10 will be 1 over 9 of 14.6745 and that's minus 12.11 squared over 10 all right so we're going to do a quick calculation for this so i'll go back to original mod so that's 1 over 9 and that's off 14.6745 and that's minus 12.11 squared and that's over 10 clause and we are going to get 0 0.001032 so i'll just write that down 0 0.001032 like this so this is the unbiased estimate s squared so we can now calculate the test statistic t so t is equal to x bar which is the sample mean which happens to be 1.211 so we have 1.211 and that's minus mu which happens to be 1.2 so we have 1.2 here and that's over s over root n which is like the square root of 0 0.001032 and that's over n which is 10 so this is the test statistic t here so let's see what we get from this so that's just gonna be 1.211 minus 1.2 and that's over the square root of 0. 001032 and that's over 10 and this gives us 1.08 to 3SF so 1.08 here now we want to see where the test statistic t lies so let us look at the graph and this is the t graph where since this test is being carried out at the 10% significance level so we know that the critical region is represented by 10% so the acceptance region is represented by 90% of the distribution so we need to find the critical t value here and to get the critical t value that's like the t value at 9 degrees of freedom since n is 10 so the degrees of freedom will be 10 minus 1 so that's 9 and that's for a p-value of 0 0.9 so if we go to the tables and we go to 9 degrees of freedom under 0 0.90 we will get the value 1.383 as the critical t-value so that's 1.383 so the critical t-value here 1.383 so if you look at the test statistic we got which is 1.08 you notice that it actually is smaller than 1.383 which is the critical t value which means it's not in the rejection region but it's actually lying in the acceptance region where we have no evidence to reject the now hypothesis so if we have no evidence to reject the now hypothesis it means we are going against the alternative hypothesis we are saying there's no evidence to say that the mean is greater than 1.2 so that's what we are going to write down as our conclusion so i'm going to say therefore there is no evidence to support the claim that the mean mass of the cabbages is greater than 1.2 kilograms so that will be the conclusion right here and that's how we do it